Hi everyone. So I think uh, now you guys uh, have gone through so many sessions on Ballerina, like the concepts, what are the features we have in the language itself and how the tool uh, itself looks like. So I will not take uh, much of your time for this final session. So I will be talking about uh, what are the other things you will get with the Ballerina uh, language itself. Uh, for example, as I have mentioned, like uh, we have designed Ballerina from scratch. So when we are designing the Ballerina, we have identified uh, some, uh, some scenarios, like uh, some features which are requested from us, uh, from our existing customers. For example, one of the most important feature uh, our customers are expecting from us is the ability to test uh, the implementations uh, which they are done which, which they are doing with the existing framework. For example, uh, if you take the WSO to ESB, uh, so how do you write a, a test framework? So how do you write a test uh, to test a particular proxy service or REST API kind of a thing? So that is one of the things uh, we have considered when we develop the Ballerina uh, programming language and its tool set. So we provide a test framework to test all the Ballerina programs which you are writing uh, using the Ballerina itself. So that is one input we have uh, taken from our customers. And also like uh, when you want to document a particular implementation, uh, for example, in the existing ESB, if you want to document a particular uh, implementation, uh, it is sometimes uh, not out of the box supported. So that is why we thought of implementing a documentation framework so that you can embed the documentation itself into the actual implementation and it will automatically generate the documentation. And also, uh, as Joseph uh, mentioned, like uh, we have developed the composer from scratch. So uh, in the previous versions, uh, we had uh, uh, different tools uh, to de develop uh, WSO2 related artifacts. So we have uh, taken the uh, a way of uh, implementing the composer in the JavaScript so that it is more adaptive and easy to implement. So the entire composer is written in uh, JavaScript. So we have used uh, different frameworks for itself. And also we have identified that uh, in most of the cases, our customers uh, are using different plugins. So they are used to uh, use different uh, IDEs. For example, some may be using the IntelliJ IDEA, some may be using Eclipse, some may be using, for example, Vim Editor or uh, Sublime Text uh, kind of things. So we thought of uh, providing plugins to all these uh, most popular IDEs as well. And also finally, since the Ballerina is a container native uh, programming language, uh, we provide the support for building Docker containers uh, with uh, pre-built Docker images as well. So these are the things uh, I will be talking about uh, during this session. So let's uh, move on to the Ballerina test framework. So as I have mentioned, like uh, you can uh, write uh, the Ballerina test uh, from Ballerina language itself. So uh, the unit testing, uh, so in most of the cases, uh, unit testing uh, is introduced at later stages. But uh, from our experience, uh, we have identified that uh, people need to uh, start uh, from the beginning about thinking about the unit test. So that is why we came with the test framework uh, where you can implement your test uh, using the Ballerina language itself rather than going for a different uh, third party framework or writing uh, the test in different languages. So uh, using the Ballerina test framework, basically you can uh, mock uh, clients, backends and Ballerina services as well. So it is a complete uh, framework which you can use to uh, write your unit test as well as integration test uh, in a Ballerina uh, development environment. So if you uh, look at uh, the Ballerina, how, how to write a Ballerina test, uh, it is uh, quite simple. So you have the Ballerina logic uh, in your uh, Ballerina file, let's say hello.bell. Then what you have to do is like uh, you write your unit test for that particular Ballerina code uh, in a file called hello underscore test.bell then it will automatically identify that uh, the test uh, case related to the hello.bell file is written in the hello underscore test.bell file. 
So that is how uh, it will automatically identify that this is the uh, test, uh, unit test related to the particular implementation. So we provide the capability uh, uh, to test these programs uh, using a command line interface. Uh, for example, uh, if you have these uh, two files uh, in the same package, uh, you can run the unit test uh, using ballerina test command. So what you have to do is uh, just type ballerina test and the, then the package name. Then it will simply run the unit test and will provide you the result of that particular unit test. So it is uh, quite simple uh, when it comes to implementation unit, implementing unit tests uh, with, with Valerina itself. <laughs> okay, so uh, then I have a simple code example as well. Uh, so here you can see uh, we have a main function uh, to simply add uh, two integers. So the function is int add. Uh, we have two inputs, uh, int a and int b. Uh, it will return the addition uh, of these two numbers. Uh, so we, uh, you can see the test uh, we have written on the other side. Basically, we need to import the ballerina.test package. And uh, uh, the method uh, we are using to test the functionality is test int. So you can give any name. So you need to start with the prefix test if it is a, if it is a test function. So then uh, we provide some assertions uh, on the test package. So you can verify after uh, calling this function whether this uh, result is correct or not. So this is uh, how you can basically uh, implement a test for a simple function which is written in Ballerina. So likewise, uh, you can implement uh, all sorts of different uh, unit tests in the Ballerina language itself. So if you see this code, the, all the code are written in the Ballerina itself. No any other language or any other framework is used for this particular scenario. So in, in addition to this, uh, for example, if you need to uh, mock a particular backend, that is also provided. So you can basically create a mock backend and mock client and implement the full end-to-end -end test uh, scenario using the Ballerina itself. So that is the uh, power of the Ballerina test framework. So then uh, uh, I will move on to the document generation part. Uh, like as I have mentioned, like uh, so the document generation is uh, somewhat important when uh, it comes to implementing your business logic. Uh, because the reason is like uh, in most of the scenarios, uh, there can be developers who write uh, some business logic, but uh, later on time they will be uh, gone from the company. So in that kind of scenarios, it is essential to have the documentation on the implementation. So that is why we thought of implementing a functionality uh, which will provide uh, the document generation uh, automatically through some annotations. So uh, with the Ballerina documentation uh, capability, uh, you can basically keep the documentation in line with the source code. So when you write the source code, uh, if you are uh, experienced with other programming languages, they, they also provide different uh, capabilities like uh, with uh, comments, you can put the documentation, then it will automatically generate. If you take Java kind of languages, they also provide this capability. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Ballerina as well, uh, we provide the capability to uh, put some annotations uh, on the source code so that they will automatically be generated as documents uh, when you build your source code of Ballerina. Uh, so basically you can uh, invoke this uh, document generation uh, through uh, two different options. Uh, one is the through the command line interface. Uh, there is a Maven, sorry, there is a Ballerina command to generate the documentation, Ballerina doc command. And also we provide a Maven plugin so that you can integrate that particular plugin uh, into your build process. So then when you are building the Ballerina source code, uh, it will automatically generate the documentation as well. So we provide both these options uh, when it comes to generating the documentation for Ballerina. So uh, we have a pre-built uh, uh, documentation formatting. Uh, if you want to change it, uh, you can do that as well. So uh, we provide uh, uh, four uh, different annotations uh, for documentation. 
so the first annotation is the description, like uh, for example, uh, for a service or for a function or a resource, uh, you can put a description annotation and you can explain what is this service is about. Uh, what is this function is about kind of things and also you can provide uh, what are the parameters uh, related to this particular method or this particular service kind of things so here you can see uh, we have specified this parameter can be attached uh, to different uh, components within the ballerina like resource function connector action uh, likewise uh, uh, from these uh, annotations, uh, you can identify whether this parameter can be uh, put as an annotation in these particular uh, artifacts like resource functions or connectors. And also you can specify the return value if it is a function uh, or action or a transformer kind of a thing. You can specify the return value through annotation as well. And also uh, you can specify some uh, field values if it is a struct. So here uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, you can see what are the available doc annotations and where you can put these annotations so that it will automatically generate the documentation uh, when you do the build. So this is an example like uh, for a method called the getXML payload method. Uh, we have added a few document annotations. So there is a description. Uh, so you can give the description like uh, this method is to get the message payload in XML format. Uh, and also you can give the parameters, what are the input parameters and what are the return values of this uh, particular method. Then it will generate uh, a documentation like I mentioned here. So uh, due to this, uh, uh, this screen, you can't see any formatting kind of things, but uh, if you go to the Ballerina site, you can see uh, the API documentation which is automatically generated from this tool. It has a ni nice layout, so you can navigate through different uh, methods. If it, is a, uh, if it is a service or a resource uh, or main function, you can basically see what are the available functions, uh, you can navigate through different structs kind of things. All these things will be nicely formatted when you generate the uh, documentation for this particular uh, scenario. So here, this is the uh, generated documentation out of the Ballerina documentation plugin. So if you need to basically change uh, the documentation uh, format, that is also possible. So that is about the documentation generation. Uh, then I have a few slides on the Composer. Uh, so Composer is the, the visual tool we have, gener uh, we have developed uh, for basically uh, implementing Ballerina uh, related artifacts. So uh, it provides the capability to basically you can uh, design the Ballerina programs either using the design view or the source view. So uh, we have followed the sequence diagram kind of a programming metaphor. Uh, when we started implementing the ballerina. So that was our starting point. Uh, then we have developed the, basically we have maintained the parity between code and the visual representation. For example, when you write some uh, code uh, in the source editor or source view, uh, the, the representation of the design view is one-to-one uh, -one mapping between the source view and the design view. So that is uh, what uh, one of the things uh, we have maintained throughout the Ballerina process. Uh, and also like, uh, so you have uh, different views of your program. So you can have a visual uh, design view, then you have the source view, and you have the swagger view as well. So, and also we provide like, uh, if you have a program with so many different functions and resources, you can basically modularize it. You can basically, uh, expand some uh, processes kind of things. So that capability is also there in the Composer. So uh, here are some uh, interfaces which you see in the Composer, like there is a tool palette and there is a drawing area, uh, which you can use to basically drag these items and drop uh, into the drawing area and then you can uh, basically wire them up uh, using a drag and drop kind of a functionality. And also we have this uh, split view, uh, so you can see the design view and source view uh, at the same time. So this is uh, one of the views we have in the Composer. 
and also uh, we have actually multiple design views so in this uh, uh, in this slide uh, you you see one of the design views uh, we have right now so when it comes to design views uh, we have identified that uh, for example in a typical integration you may write code uh, which expands up to let's say hundreds of lines so then when you are visualizing a program which has 100 plus lines uh, it is hard to visualize right uh, in one page it is hard to visualize one program if it is uh, expanding beyond 100 lines of code so that is why we came up with uh, multiple design view options so one option is like uh, uh, so here you can see uh, the entire source code uh, in this design view so you can see every statement in this view left hand side view but if you uh, if you check the right hand side view so this is the same program but in a different view so what we have done here is like uh, we have basically uh, we have hide uh, some of the information and we have only uh, showcased the interactions between different parties for example if it is uh, multiple endpoints or workers you will only see those interactions not the the actual uh, lines uh, to give you an understanding like when you look at this particular integration uh, you can get an understanding about what are the parties involved and how they are interacting with each other so that is uh, why uh, we have uh, basically introduced these multiple design views uh, considering the practical uh, requirements like uh, in a practical case you may be write a program which has hundreds of lines so that is why we came up with this new design where you can only see the uh, related integration points uh, then uh, you can basically run and debug the programs as well uh, from the composer itself so we provide the capability to uh, run the program from the composer itself uh, so it will show you in the console panel uh, what is happening in the program if it is a main program it will run and exit if it is a service it will run and provide you the try it capability so that you can basically try that service uh, using the tool itself basically you don't need to navigate to a, a separate tool uh, if you are trying out this particular service and also if you want to debug the program that is also possible uh, you can put breakpoints either in the design view or source view and you can see what are the values of these different variables uh, from the uh, composer itself so uh, it is kind of a one-stop shop uh, you can use uh, to develop all your ballerina programs and uh, if you want to basically uh, debug or run the programs you can do the same from the tool itself so this is the try it tool uh, which I have mentioned like uh, you can specify what are the uh, available services what are the available resources uh, then what what is the request uh, what is the request format and you can see what is the response coming out of that service kind of information you can see okay so then uh, i will move on to the ide plugins part uh, like as i have mentioned like uh, if you are familiar with the particular ide uh, we don't want to move you out of that ide instead what we have done is like uh, we have written some plugins to support all these different ides so the Ballerina IntelliJ IDEA plugin is uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the feature-rich uh, IDE plugins because uh, in our WSO2 environment uh, we heavily use the IntelliJ IDEA. So we have developed this uh, ID IntelliJ IDEA plugin uh, so that uh, it will provide a similar kind of uh, experience as the composer like it will also have the syntax highlighting suggestions and you can run debug programs uh, using the IntelliJ IDEA itself so uh, that is uh, one of the most uh, feature rich plugins we have right now so you can do uh, most of the things which you can do uh, from the uh, composer itself uh, from the source uh, source view uh, so ballerina uh, uh, IDEA plugin does not have the design view aspect uh, it only have the source code view but it provides uh, these capabilities like syntax highlighting uh, suggestions run debug kind of capabilities so if you are familiarized with this particular tool you can keep on continuing with uh, using the idea uh, with the ballerina programming language itself 
So then, uh, as I have mentioned, like uh, you can create a new ballerina. Uh, so in the I, uh, IntelliJ idea, there is a separate uh, project type for ballerina. Uh, if you are creating a ballerina project, you can select that type. Uh, so likewise, uh, they have these different project types, uh, Maven, Gradle, Scala, Kotlin kind of. So we have the ballerina project type as well. Uh, then uh, from the tool itself, uh, like as I have mentioned, uh, so you can debug them. Uh, then you can see what are the variables. You can put uh, watchers for different variables. So these capabilities also they are in the IntelliJ IDEA plugin itself. Okay, so in addition to that, uh, we provide uh, uh, some more Ballerina plugins uh, for other IDEs like uh, Visual Studio Code, Atom, uh, Sublime Text, and Vim. So currently, uh, these plugins are not uh, up to date with the 0.95 release. Uh, we are working on uh, implementing these uh, plugins to move on to the 0.95 release. Uh, whatever the uh, plugins you see in the Ballerina Lang website are compatible with the previous Ballerina language versions. But uh, we will definitely be updating this uh, with the next upcoming release. So uh, then uh, we will have the support uh, for uh, these particular tools. Uh, to basically develop Ballerina programs. So when we provide support, uh, it will not be as rich as uh, the Composer or the IntelliJ plugin, but they will provide new syntax highlighting kind of capabilities as well. So then uh, uh, final uh, part is the Docker support. Uh, like I have mentioned, like uh, the Ballerina is a container native uh, programming language. Uh, basically, uh, most of the time people will be using Ballerina for writing their uh, microservices or integration microservices. So that is why we thought of uh, providing uh, the Ballerina Docker command. So basically with the Ballerina Docker command, uh, you can build your own Docker containers uh, out of the Ballerina programs. So if, uh, if you have a Ballerina program uh, written in hello.bell file, uh, you can create a Docker image out of that uh, using Ballerina Docker command. What you need to execute is uh, Ballerina Docker and the uh, Ballerina file name. Uh, it will automatically create the Docker image uh, which you can run in a containerized environment. Uh, and also if it is a Ballerina package or a service, uh, you can do the same as well. So uh, if, you, uh, if you want to create a Docker image out of the Ballerina base image, uh, which we have published in the Docker Hub, uh, that is also possible. So we provide this uh, command line interface uh, to build the uh, Ballerina Docker images. So that is about the support uh, of Docker for the Ballerina language. So yes, it is. Uh, that's all I have. Like, uh, if you uh, if you are interested in Ballerina, you can visit the Ballerina website and you can start with the Ballerina by example and contribute. So these are the main uh, points which you can uh, use to getting started with the ballerina. OK, so if you have any questions, I can take now. Do you have a plugin for checks or are you planning to? Yeah, so right now uh, we don't have a plugin. Uh, so we can take your input and we can definitely build a plugin for Eclipse. Okay, so right now uh, we have uh, nearly 100 co uh, contributors to the Ballerina uh, GitHub repository. And uh, like uh, we, uh, we are just getting started. Uh, if you go to the Ballerina uh, GitHub page, there are around 200 stars. So most of them we have achieved uh, within this year. Uh, so when we have more and more engagement with our community, uh, there will be more and more uh, community community contributors to the Ballerina language. So right now, most of the contributors are from the WSO to itself. So we definitely have uh, some outside contributors as well. Yeah. Yes, 
yeah i think uh, it's a good question like uh, so what we see is like uh, you can use a ballerina design view to basically uh, generate the skeleton of your integration basically you can drag the endpoints and then you can drag the actions and you can wire them from the design view so that is easier to getting started uh, but if you are writing some complex business logic then uh, the way forward would be to uh, switch to the source view and write your uh, particular logic in the source view itself so that is uh, how we see uh, at this particular moment uh, how you can uh, basically use the design view and source view in conjunction So, if we don't have any other questions. One question regarding the scalability of this. Let's say you have built a service and that is really going to be huge. So, you need many instances. You've dockerized it. So, is there anything that, that basically uh, you have built into the platform uh, that you can take for, for balancing the load over many containers? Or how does that work? Okay, so you mean the load balancing kind of functionality? Okay, so uh, it uh, it is a kind of a question about uh, how you deploy the Bellerina programs kind of thing, right? The automating the process. So uh, right now uh, what we have is like uh, we are working on uh, implementing some kind of a, a, a repository concept. Uh, like uh, you can have your own uh, repositories and uh, build the programs uh, based on the content of those repositories. For example, uh, in an environment where you have uh, so many services, uh, you can have a central repository and then uh, you can have uh, some kind of uh, automated build process. So that in that build process, uh, you will take the artifacts from that repository and take the source code from the source control mechanism and build the code and then deploy it automatically. So basically you can automate this process uh, using uh, Jenkins kind of a tool uh, then uh, it will be automatically deployed into multiple instances. So that would, that would be the uh, way forward. So right now we are working on that, like uh, building some plugins and uh, building this repository concept. So right now uh, we are working on that. Yes, uh, actually we are using Netty uh, for exposing the ballerina to, for example, through HTTP. So we are using Netty uh, as the underlying platform uh, to basically start this server instance. So it will be automatically created when you run the ballerina program. So that is uh, one of the things we are using in the ballerina itself. Yes. Um, which JVM is recommended to use for that? So normally uh, we recommend to use the Oracle JVM. Uh, so that is the recommended platform. Are you going to support another one? Uh, yeah, basically uh, we have uh, we have uh, tested that on Open JDK as well. So it will also run on Open JDK as well. So, but our recommendation is to use the Oracle JDK. Uh, so the minimum requirement would be eight. So before uh, beyond eight, you can use eight or nine. So the minimum is eight. Okay. So we 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 basically do the testing on eight, version eight. So we'll definitely test on nine as well. Yes, so, so right now uh, when you run the test, uh, there will be some information in the console. So we are working on generating some reports as well, like uh, you are getting a full report out of the test. 
that will be coming. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.